they say it's getting ready for the market. Are any of these ready? Are they valid? I don't, again, I don't know, but I want to talk about 3D printing because I think this is actually the core. This is possibly the thing that will, I hate to be uh, over the top enthusiastic, but I am over the top enthusiastic about the potentiality of 3D printing in our world. This has the potential to break the stranglehold of this hierarchical control system that we're all dealing with. 3D printing basically means you put up a 3D uh, CAD design of something, all right, of a device. Right now they do a lot of coffee cups because we're just at that early stage. And an extruder, uh, a device will extrude plastic and layer by layer will recreate exactly your design. Now, right now we're at a very early stage of it, but we're looking to be doing 3D printers of 3D printing of biological materials. And this is, I just read this article two, three days ago out of Wired. This is incredible stuff. You have scientists in, uh, at the University of Texas who have made 3D printed with a laser, a laser type of technology at the microscopic level, a cage, a donut shaped, a donut -shaped cage to hold bacteria. Pretty nifty. This stuff is moving fast. All right, so the future of 3D printing essentially involves not just plastic. Japan right now, they're doing 3D printing of metal. And in the next few years, we're gonna be talking about 3D printing of mixed materials, including integrated circuits and electronics. It's gonna happen. 3D printing of organic materials, including food, if you can believe it. All right, but using 3D scanners, you would be able to scan exactly and reproduce. This is like Star Trek's replicator. As crazy as it sounds, it's happening. It is happening. So now, let me put an idea here into your head, all right? Do you think some smart fellow or a smart lady somewhere in the world is gonna come up with a 3D device that will be over Unity? They'll put up a 3D design of an over Unity device. Yeah, I think so. Hell yes, I think so. Are they all going to work? Probably not. Will some of them work? Hey, let's find out. What we're looking at, this is like the Pirate Bay marries the world of manufacturing. I mean, really. All right, remember with Napster, people file sharing and downloading music and they weren't supposed to do it and Metallica got really pissed off. But guess what? You can't stop it. You can't stop it. It's happening. It's happening everywhere. So what's, what's going to happen, I guarantee this, some smart person on their own is going to come up with something that's probably classified right now. So do you think they're not going to upload it for that reason? No, I think they will certainly upload it. And they may not even care about getting profit off of it. They don't give a shit. They'll just upload it. And then you and other people will download it. And you're going to make it. Now, I don't know when this will happen. Maybe not before five years because our technology, we're just kind of coming up to it. But it's going to happen as sure as anything else will happen. So there's going to be a big fight over this. You're going to have people saying, oh, well, you're stealing intellectual property rights. Well, yes, maybe. I don't know. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's going to happen. And if they make it illegal in America, they're still going to be doing it in other countries, and it's just going to spread. Right now, they're trying to scare you by saying, oh, yeah, your neighbors can 3D print a gun. Do you want that to happen? That's pure scare tactics. Don't buy into it. Of course, there's dangers. There's always dangers. It's the world. But there's, this, there's an opportunity here that is off the charts. The, the opportunity is that there will be a true free market of innovation, a true free market of selling. Whether it's black market or not, again, is irrelevant. It's going to happen. It's going to break this system that's in place a hierarchical control system. Well, does that mean that uh, the, ener the answer to the energy is cold fusion or in uh, some electromagnetic system? I don't know. That's not really my expertise. Maybe that's yours, not mine. Doesn't matter. The point is that something's going to do it. All right? So there's going to be a lot of conflict over this, a lot of fighting, but you can't stop. You know, it's like trying to stop the tide from coming in. There's that story of the emperor goes out to the beach. I command you to, to not come in, Tide. Well, the Tide's going to come in anyway. That's our world. Now, there's a lot of tremendous opportunity here. Let's not shortchange it. And actually, I will be done on time. This is incredible. <laughs> this is a first for me. All right? I just want you to understand, I have never done this before. 
And it's only 60 minutes, which is short for me. The opportunity is that we do have a possible era of true abundance. And that could mean peace. There's a very good argument to be made that the wars that we're dealing with are based on scarcity. Lack of water, lack of other resources, right? And that if you give people what they need, which is sufficient energy, which is the bottom line for all of this, then you might have a world of happy people that don't have an incentive to start blowing each other up. That's a possibility. There's another possibility that I think is very attractive, which is environmental remediation. There are a lot of technologies on, on board right now that actually could do a very good job at, at remediation of toxic spills and toxins in our environment and so forth. But one of the biggest technical hurdles we have is simply having enough energy to do it. But that might be overcome now. So there's some incredible potentials here. And we don't want to lose sight of them. There are also threats. I, I say that I'm an idealist, but I'm not a utopian. And I'm not a utopian. We have to look at this with a cold eye, with an objective eye. Um, the world of 3D printing combined with some other developments like advanced computing, perhaps even approaching the singularity, perhaps advances in nanotech. Uh, who knows what the capability will be to create newer and better weapons. If you have a uh, access to zero-point energy, let's say that there's a tremendous amount of energy that's available there. Many people say there is. So if you have access to that, could you blow up the Atlantic Ocean? You know, maybe you won't, but there are always assholes in this world, so there are going to be people who will try to do it. Until we all shed this mortal coil and ascend into a higher density or whatever, we're going to be human beings, and we're not all going to be trusted, and so that's a concern. Now, I'm not trying to be a fear monger, but that's a concern. Um, and, you know, just the idea of giving humans a little more energy or a lot more energy is not always the thing that I think is the best idea. I mean, we got a lot more energy with oil, and it allowed us to crawl over the earth like termites, gobbling everything up. Not just polluting, but just like eating all the fish in the ocean and all the other things that we do. So we have to be careful to think that, oh, yeah, more energy will solve all of our problems. I think we have to be, we have to be mindful of the other sides of this. Um, and then, you know, just a, a practical problem will be the confrontation that people will have with the hierarchical system that's in place, whether it's the breakaway civilization, black budget world, the financial elites, whatever they are. They are not going to take this lying down. They're going to fight. This is for their own survival. So that's, and will that result in a, in a global fascist state that is imposed? Again, I don't know. But these are things that I think about. So all of these are issues. And we have to be grown up here and, and realize that it, it's going to take a lot of work and uh, a lot of tenacity for us to toe the line and do the right thing and, and navigate our way through this. And again, I don't have every answer. Um, I'm just about done. We're going to finish this on time. Are we on time? Okay. What I, the last thought I want to leave you with here is that this energy, this breakthrough energy that you are all here concerned with, is one, not the only, it's one of many pivotal issues that we're facing right now in this generation, in this time. All right? Uh, I think what we're going to see is a perfect storm develop. That is, a multitude of issues are going to come to a head. One of them will be energy. One of them will be exposure of cover-ups and crimes. One of them will be the UFO phenomenon, which I wrote about at length in, in one book called AD After Disclosure, where I really try to envision a world in which the UFO cover-up does end. How might it end, I ask? And what after that? How would it change, transform, rock our world? The answer that I came to, I co-wrote this book, was that it will utterly transform our world in ways that I think it it's almost difficult for us to imagine, and I tried. But scientifically, in terms of culture, in terms of politics, geopolitics, uh, spirituality, everything, it's transformative. And I think that's on the way. Um, and then, of course, things coming to a head in terms of advanced computing and perhaps the advent of what we might call the singularity. Uh, I think that is a real possibility. All of this is happening within the next generation. Most of us are going to be here to see it. It's going to be a very, very wild ride. It may not always be a pleasant ride, but we're going to be here, and it's our obligation. It's our obligation to go through it with as much integrity and bravery as we can muster. It may not be easy, but I think we can do it. Uh, I would encourage you to visit my website. It's richardolanpress.com. These are some of my books. I have a new book coming out. 
Uh, by the way, these other books are here. You can, you can peruse them on the, uh, the, the tables outside. Uh, the new book I have is called UFOs of the 21st Century Mind, and it's a new overview of the entire topic of UFOs. I'm very excited about this book. I think it uh, covers the, the field in all of its uh, incredible mystery and uh, maddening, you know, uh, maddening glory. Uh, that'll be out in a month or two. So um, for that, I want to thank you for your time. I think it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And I think, um, hey, I love seeing people stand up. That's great. So we're going to go to uh, tent number one, and we're going to go visit the panel. Okay? Mm -hmm.